you like the way that I move. Hey, it's five two three. I need an ambulance right now. Rashard Jackson was born on July 20th, 1999, in Brooklyn, New York, to a Jamaican mother and Panamanian father. He gained a taste for music early on as his mother sang in the choir and his father played conga drums. He stated where he's from, there's only three options of making it out. Become a rapper, a ball player, or a drug dealer. It just so happened he would experience all three of these. In middle school he would be expelled from school for bringing a gun in his backpack marking the beginning of the rough teenage years which would inevitably lead him to joining the Crips and Woos. But this doesn't mean he didn't try sports as a way out first though. When he was 15, he got a scholarship to Rocktop Academy in Philly, but was forced to leave his hoop dreams after a doctor's visit showed he had a heart murmur. In his own words, you like nice things, you gotta do things to get nice things. He would return to the streets once again where he had his first taste of the finer things in life. By the age of 16, he had made enough money to buy himself a 5 Series BMW. Even though this was years later, he eventually was charged for bringing the weapon to school and placed on two years probation and house arrest. This forced him to focus on school. He says this is the only reason why he graduated. One night when he was hanging out with his friends, they all decided to go to a music studio, where his acquaintance Jay Guapo was recording that night. After a few hours of Jay Guapo recording, he ended up falling asleep in the studio. With the studio time already being paid, he decided to hop on the microphone. Having never rapped seriously before, he went to YouTube and pulled up beats. He recorded Money, Power, Respect that night, and the very next day everyone on his block was showing love to his song. He knew then he might have a chance of making it out of the streets. With his whole hood behind him, he knew he needed to drop some more music. He went back to YouTube wanting more beats from the same person. The producer's name was 808 Mello, and he was actually a UK drill producer. He continued to take beats from 808 Mello's YouTube and recorded a few songs. Each one getting more popular. He said, let me go back to his page. Yeah. See what else he got. Uh -huh. And I just kept going to his page, going to his page. He decided to go with the name Pop Smoke. His grandma would call him Papa when he was little, but his friends would shorten that to just Pop. And the smoke part was part of his street name. After dropping his single Meet the Woo, it would get 100,000 views its first day. This changed everything. His music would catch the attention of a producer named Rico Beats. Rico Beats was good friends with Steven Victor who had just launched his own label, Victor Victor Worldwide, and was looking for new artists to sign. Steven reached out to Pop Smoke and they decided to meet later that week in his New York office. It was in this office that Pop Smoke not only signed his first deal, but he and Steven would come up with a game plan of how he was going to change the game forever. While they met, Pop showed Steven he had talent far outside of the drill music he had been putting online. He could actually sing too, and he was pretty good at it. Steven told Pop he wanted him to drop a few tapes where he would take over the whole subgenre of Brooklyn drill. And after a few was patient, they would debut his album, showcasing his drill and his more marketable singing side. While this is going on, 808 Mello is in the UK watching Pop gain a bigger and bigger buzz off his beats without paying him. He reached out to Pop Smoke for payments of his now pretty popular songs, but instead of getting money, Pop offered to fly him out to New York and work in-house on his upcoming mixtape, Meet the Woo. Just before dropping his tape, he released his single titled Welcome to the Party and his life changed forever. The song went crazy and he was no longer a struggling local artist. The whole state of New York knew who he was. With his name circulating the streets, they knew it was time to drop his debut tape. On July 26, 2019, Meet the Woo Volume 1 officially dropped. Dior would peak at number 22 on the Billboard Hot 100 and would later go platinum, taking his career to the next level. After the release of this tape, Pop began to break into the mainstream, getting co-signs from multiple major artists. With the success of his tape, he was finally starting to sell out bigger shows too. Even Travis Scott invited him to perform on his Astro World tour. But the music wasn't just popular in the United States. Because 808 Mellow and Pop Smoke's music bridged the gap between UK drill and New York, even people overseas were catching wind of the music. 
and wanted to hear more after the UK rapper Skepta remixed Welcome to the Party. This was a huge moment because Skepta is known for being one of the biggest drill artists in the UK, and this would bring more attention to Pop's music. Ultimately, the popular DJ Semtex would invite Pop to come perform overseas, despite promoters being skeptical due to him only having a few songs out. It didn't matter though, he was already becoming a superstar, selling out every show in the UK. The UK embraced him like no American rapper before. He was the only one to bring the UK drill sound to the United States and do it successfully. After returning home and enjoying the rest of his 2019, he went on a promo run, hyping up his coming tape, Meet the Woo 2. In January, he attended a Louis Vuitton fashion show in Paris, but on his trip back to New York, the FBI was waiting for him and arrested him. He was held for allegedly stealing a Rolls Royce Wraith valued at $375,000 from a home in Los Angeles. He was later released on $250,000 bond, but prohibited from traveling outside the United States without permission. This led to 50 Cent, who had been watching Pop from a distance, to call a meeting with Pop and Steven. 50 led the meeting by warning him he didn't need to be doing these things anymore. He told him to watch his friends and the company he keeps, because they're waiting for you to fuck up. They aren't really your friends. 50 would tell him to follow his guidance. He could get anyone on the phone, he said. He could get him in movies, TV shows, but if you continue down that path, you're gonna end up dead or in jail. This conversation changed the way Pop Smoke looked at everything. He realized he didn't need to do that street stuff anymore. He could really make a living off music. On February 7, 2020, he dropped Meet the Woo Volume 2, and it debuted at number 7, giving him his very first top 10 with less than one year in the game. Everything was going unbelievably well for him. Him and his entourage booked an expensive Airbnb and a flight to Los Angeles to celebrate. He was partying and going on shopping sprees, and uploaded multiple photos and videos online. One of the videos uploaded accidentally included the address he and his friends were staying at. This would catch the attention of four members from Hoover, who would break into the house on February 19th and shoot him multiple times and attempt to rob him. Initially speculation that it was an inside job from one of Pop's friends circulated, or that the owner of the Rolls Royce he had stolen was responsible, but these theories were quickly debunked. Friends and neighbors were interviewed, but very little information was given out, quickly leaving his family and fans to believe the killers may actually get away with this. Stephen Victor took to social media to let everyone know that justice will be served. He was right, and in July 2020, the LAPD arrested five suspects for Pop Smoke's murder. The LAPD went public letting everyone know they had to solve this the old-fashioned way, going door-to-door -door asking neighbors of the suspects if they had heard anything. Ultimately, footage from nearby houses and businesses traced the killers back to Hoover Street. It's still believed that the leaked address on social media was the motive behind the robbery gone wrong. Meanwhile, the investigation was going on. 50 Cent had reached out to Steven, telling him he wanted to executive produce Pop Smoke's post album. Steven, who had stated he didn't want to put any of Pop's music out due to being sad just hearing his voice, ended up allowing 50 Cent to help create a project Pop would have been proud of, so his family could benefit from it. 50 started reaching out to multiple artists and started filling open verses on unfinished songs. On July 3rd, 2020, Pop Smoke's debut album, Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon, was released, and it debuted at number one, with 251,000 copies being sold its first week. With the number one album and his killers behind bars possibly facing a death penalty, it felt like a small win in the right direction. But the truth is, none of this needed to happen. He was only 20 years old with under a year in mainstream rap, and he had already managed to create a whole new sound. Although he's gone, his music will live forever.